Hi everyone, I'm Dave Giancola, joined again by Mike Trosel to relive a USGA Championship Classic finish. Tiger Woods, the biggest name in the game, won three consecutive U.S. Junior Amateur titles from 1991 to 1993. Now, the following year, he was ready to take on the best amateurs in the world as they competed for the Havemeyer Trophy, this time at TPC Sawgrass in Florida. And Dave, Tiger was just 18 years old at the time, aiming to become the youngest champion in U.S. amateur history. He trailed Oklahoma State standout Trip Keeney, six down through 13 holes in the 36-hole championship match, but it was far from over. Yeah, Tiger had some work to do, five down with 12 holes remaining, and that's where we'll pick up the 94 U.S. Amateur Championship match between Tiger Woods and Trip Keeney. Now at the sixth, Woods drove left again. He's not driven the ball very well. Caught a palm frong and finds himself in a veritable forest of palm trees goes on to lose the hole. This is moments ago. Now Woods five down. This to win the hole, a birdie putt for Tiger. Got it. Our situation in the 94th U.S. Amateur Championship is this. Through 25, Tripkini, four up on Tiger Woods. We send you down to Bob Rossberg. Rossi? Well, Brent, uh, even though Tripkini is seven under par for the day, he has not been pressured very much by Tiger Woods. I think Tiger, by his own admission, would say this is maybe the second worst round he's played, even though he's only made one bogey in 25 holes. But he really hasn't been sharp. He hasn't driven the ball well. He has not putted very well. Missed a lot of them this morning. I think the fifth hole where Tripp got it up and down from a miracle spot, uh, I think that really had a lot to do with what's going to happen in this match. If Tiger just won the fourth hole, if he'd have won the fifth, he'd have been only three down, but he didn't, and then he lost the sixth. So he's got a long way to come, even though he just buried the seventh. Eighth tee. We are now live. This is the second of the par threes on the front side. Here's Tiger. This is an excellent shot on this 216 yard par three. He has had problems on this hole all week long. This is a good golf swing, Brent. This young man plays nicely within himself. He's only missed six greens today. This is a very difficult golf course, tee to green although we are playing under almost ideal weather conditions this week. Very well struck. All he had to do, Trip Keeney of Oklahoma State, Four up right now against Tiger Woods, who came in the favorite to win this amateur championship. ESPN's presentation of the 1994 Men's U.S. Amateur is brought to you by Karsten Manufacturing, makers of custom fit, custom built, Ping Zing 2 irons and metal woods. We are back and Trip Keeney is trying to keep it in the family to the best of anyone's knowledge. No family has captured two USGA championships in the same year. Kelly Keeney out at the Meadowlark Country Club in Great Falls, Montana, five weeks ago, won the Junior Girls Championship. She's now in that gallery out there with the family watching her brother to see if they can make it a Keeney double. To get here, he defeated Chris Cox, his good friend and teammate from Oklahoma State. Keeney's gotten in a position where if he doesn't make mistakes, he puts the pressure on Woods and forces Woods to take some chances and attempt to make birdie. The way Keeney's playing, though, this is really fun to watch. As we said, he was six under par if he were to post a medal score on his morning round. 
And thus far, he has been virtually flawless. He had the errant second shot at five, but otherwise, it's been pretty good. In Tiger's comeback against Buddy Alexander, he received a lot of help. And so Steve's point is really germane to this because Keeney would have to start making mistakes. Good looking lag putt. It's interesting that Keeney had a short putt for par earlier in this second round of the, I shouldn't call it a second round since it's a 36 hole match, but Woods uh, failed to concede it. It was well inside the leather. Now, can he roll in another long putt for a win? He has putted magnificently so far in this championship. As Steve told you, we've only seen him miss one short one here earlier today. Has a great putting stroke. Very well done, though, wasn't it? Well, our hats are off to Fred Clouck, the superintendent here at the Players Club. He's got two courses under his responsibility, and both in excellent shape. The Valley course uh, used for the other half of the qualifying here. Keeney conceding. That's part of the rules in uh, match play. And now for the half. At our club, we'd say that Woods has locked y'all. He's making fun of those little ones. <laughs> well, in fairness, he's down by four. And uh, the only way he can get it is for Tripp to start missing some of those. Now, let's move on to the ninth hole. This is a lovely par five here at the TPC, Steve. At 582 yards, Tiger Woods very nearly knocked it on this green in two, not once, but twice this week during matches. For most players, though, it's a layup with a long iron of fairy wood just past those little grove of oak trees there on the right. Then it sets up a short pitch of anywhere from 100 to maybe down to 50 yards to a very elevated but small green. Very well laid out, well designed par five. Flag stick today in the front portion of the green. What you've got to worry about is this swale here because balls run off this way. Actually, it's not a difficult position given the fact that greens are relatively soft and there's very little wind. Tiger Woods has not driven the ball as well today as we have seen him here earlier this week. Tripp Keeney has been a little steadier off the tee. So as Bob Rosberg told you, this is probably the weakest overall round by Tiger Woods. A couple of great saves, but all in all, he's made only one bogey today. So uh, it is Tripp Keeney who has played wonderfully. Wind coming out of the right, just a shade. Woods has hit another hook. He's hit a lot of balls to the left. It's interesting too, Rossi, that he said he's worked all summer on trying to get rid of the hook, and here it reappears under pressure. Amazing how that pressure will kind of flush out all the bad things, Steve. I don't know why that is, but it, it sure does. Rossi, what about this young man's swing? I think uh, I, I hadn't watched him until uh, this morning, and I'll tell you, he played some kind of a round, and swing was just beautiful. He, he just played almost perfect. Right down the middle again. It's another fairway, and one of the reasons why Trip Keeney leads Tiger Woods. Keeney four up right now as we continue. Be long, folks will be in the swamp. It'll be the Gators and Steve Spurrier trying to win that national championship at the Seminoles of Florida State. One last year. They'll try to keep it right here in the marshland of Florida. 
Actually, it's inland in Gainesville. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so it is. We're putting I don't know my there. geography down there in this state. <laughs> now, let's go out to the night. And uh, Tiger Woods is away here. Rossi? Tiger caught a pretty good lie in that left-hand rough. He can play almost any kind of a shot he wants. Uh, I would just think he'd take some kind of an iron and, uh, and hit it up about 100 yards short of the green, as Steve suggested. It doesn't really do him a lot of good to take any kind of a fairway wood, but you can't tell what's in his mind. Anything he thinks he can hit straight. Keeney can actually probably knock it pretty close to the green if he so chooses. The flagstick cut up front, though, I don't think it'll do him a lot of good. Leave himself a little fuller shot, I think it'd be better. Well, he's gone with a fairway wood. Yeah, he might try to cut it back into the wind, Steve. And, you know, it's whatever you can hit straight up here. It's pretty narrow, a little uh, opening up here. No, Rossi's gone back to the iron. When you're four holes up, you do not need to take chances. Fairways and greens, as they say, Steve. Huh? Not a good layup. No, not at all. Maybe he had the right choice the first time. Trip Keeney from Waco, Texas, and yesterday, Steve had an opportunity to speak with the young man. You've just come off a very emotional uh, semifinal win over your college teammate Chris Cox, and now you face what many to be believed to be the best uh, amateur golfer in the country at this time in Tiger Woods. I asked Tiger the question, was the pressure on him? And he said no. Then I ask you the same question. Is, Is the pressure, pressure on you? No, because I think if you know you took a poll again that you'd find that everybody knows who everybody knows who Tiger Woods is. Um, Everybody says, well, who's Trip Keeney? Everybody knows his little sister, Kelly. But, who, you know, who's Trip Keeney? I don't think I really have anything to go out there and lose. Um, I just go out there and have a good time, enjoy the moment, and play good golf and realize that he's going to hit great shots. And he's a human being just like the rest of us. Uh, he's just a wonderful golfer, superb. And uh, just go out there and play good golf and have a good time and enjoy what's going on. And, you know, hopefully I, I play well and my game rises to the next level. And, you know, I get an opportunity maybe win the U.S. Amateur Championship. That's all you can ask for is an opportunity. And I have that opportunity. Maybe I can take advantage. He certainly has more than an opportunity now. And he did rise to the occasion on the 18 that was played this morning. And they broke for lunch and they came back. And this is a true 36-hole test of golf. Second time this week that they've been asked to go out. Although earlier, a few days ago, when they played 36 holes, they had a different opponent. Today you're matched against the same man here for the championship. Tiger Woods bidding to become the youngest United States amateur champion ever. And he is going to need to come off the pace as he did a couple matches ago against the coach of the Florida golf team, Buddy Alexander. Now it'll be, uh, is Tiger next here, Rossi? Yes, Tiger's away. And I'll tell you, this is a pretty uh, crucial decision. It was very close as to who was away. But the uh, trip can now see what Tiger does, and it may dictate what he tries to do with his shot. He does not have a good lie in the bunker. Uh, it's kind of rolled in and settled in the bunker. Uh, I don't think he can play at the flag, uh, but if Tiger knocks it stiff, he may try. Tiger has a shot of about 80 yards. Ball just slightly above his feet. Should not give him any problem at all. I think he'll aim it out at the... 10 or 12 feet to the right of the hole and let it spin down the hill. Everything goes from right to left. Very hard to stop it going downwind.
Well, the road to the final, not easy for either of these players. Uh, Vaughn Moise, the PGA Tour official, good match with him, two and one. Buddy Alexander, the great match we've talked about. Uh, Buddy Moore lost it, then Tiger won it. But he had a two-footer to go four up, missed it, and the rest, as they say, is history. And a good, well-played match, and he won yesterday against Rochette, five and three. Yeah, that's very long. I would think he should have tried to bump it into the right hand side of the uh, of the green. There's a pretty good opening there where he could have played a little bump and run shot and at the worst been in the front bunker. And that's that's not bad where he is now. Very difficult. Keeney's road to the final. A little tougher perhaps to play John Grace a runner up to Jerry Pate went extra holes for that win. Bryony Baird the good player from Georgia Tech. And the, and the most emotional match of the week. He beat his teammate and best friend, Chris Cox. He came to the last hole, and in what is a wonderful moment, they embraced as uh, Keeney won one up. It's interesting to note that both Woods and Keeney both shot 36 hole qualifying scores of 137 as they made their way into the low 64 for match play. Well, see, I wonder if Keeney perhaps hit too long a tee shot because obviously he thought he could knock it on with that club. And then, you know, sometimes it's not always easy to lay up. No, a layup is a hard shot, Steve. And, uh, you know, he might have been better off just going at it uh, and, and just go the way he got here. Uh, I don't think he can change his plan now. He was very aggressive the first 14 or 15 holes this morning. And then he kind of went safe. Well, we mentioned Kelly, his sister, and there she is, the U.S. Girls Junior Champion. Won that title in Montana five weeks ago. Now she'll watch her brother's third here on the par five. Actually, his fourth. Um, yeah, excuse me, his fourth. Very tough shot, long bunker shot back into the wind. Hard to play. Well, the book on Kelly, and this from Brother Tripp, is that she is the more competitive uh, of the two, if you will. She's really tough under pressure, thrives on pressure. Tripp kind of easy going, laid back, uh, kind of relies on his game, and she just can't wait to get out and play every day. Now Tiger, and he can win the hole if he makes this putt, Rossi. I don't think Tiger will... Uh take too aggressive a run at this. I mean, sure, he's going to try and make it, but I think in the back of his mind, he thinks two putts will get the job done. Tiger putting from about 25 feet. Even though these greens are fast for Bermuda, we haven't seen a lot of three putts this week. Ball doesn't get away real quick around the hole. This time, uh, Tripp did not concede the, the short putt, as he's been doing. A couple of short putts uh, were not conceded by Tiger earlier in this match either. And so now, Tripp Keeney with this par putt. There's a little grain in this green. It runs to Tripp's left. If you get it outside the hole, it may not come back. break and now for the win we have a major case of lockjaw and suddenly nobody can see anything <laughs> a little gamesmanship here 
Tiger missed one for birdie on the 11th hole this morning about this length. Nope. And the lead down to three. Tiger Woods, three down. Now, let's take a look at the 10th situation a little bit tighter than it was a few hours ago. The 10th, not a long hole, but a tight hole. You must fit your tee shot between the waist area on the left and the pines on the right. Then it's a medium iron second to a relatively large undulating green. If you drive it well, it sets up a birdie opportunity. And the flag stick today, and perhaps the most inaccessible pin placement, that being back right. Keeney's biggest lead of the day, he was at six up in the 18 holes played earlier this morning. Now that has been cut in half, and Keeney leads Tiger Woods three up. This is a tee shot that sets up better for someone who draws the ball rather than someone who plays a little fade. Very important tee shot, I think, Steve, for Mr. Woods right here. Does not want to put this one out of play. Going with the fairway wood. This one's to the right. Overcompensated there, Rossi. You've got a great view of it. Terrible shot, really. Uh, you know, I, I don't know about the fairway wood. It seems to me you either take a driver or you take an iron off this tee. Uh, fairway wood sometimes uh, it goes so high in the air that when you're playing into the wind uh, it makes it a little more difficult to keep it straight and that was way offline. Rossi I suspect that he is somewhere between a fade and a hook that is Tiger Woods and I, I don't think he can choose the right swing to bring out at the right time. That is probably very true Steve. Keeney the more aggressor here uh, although he too has a fairway wood. too far left or is it perfect that is in the bunker to the left but that's okay you can play from there unless you're right up against the lip it's far better to miss it left than Woods did far right so the final nine holes perhaps three up trip Keeney over Tiger Woods and we'll continue weather down here on the uh, north coast of Florida has been magnificent for this amateur championship. Last year was plagued a bit by rain and thunderstorms in Houston and that's always a possibility here too but it has not been that way. It has been absolutely glorious down here and uh, Rossi what's the situation here at the 10th. Tiger Woods hit it not only crooked but very short but actually got a good break. Uh, he's sitting on the pine needles over there with a beautiful lie, wide open. He's 185 yards from the hole. Uh, as Steve mentioned, the flag stick back right is not very accessible, but I think Tiger has a, a good chance to get the ball on the green. Uh, Trip Keeney has a good lie in the bunker. He's out in the middle of the bunker. He's about 165. Uh, not too difficult a shot for him either. You saw that uh, Woods move that palm frong. It's interesting if you touch anything, I believe Frank handing it within a club length of the ball and the ball subsequently move, what happens? If he move, if it, then it's, he's deemed to have caused it to move, that he would incur a one stroke penalty and he'd have to replace the ball. Tricky business when you're in uh, pine needles. It's a little bit like playing pickup sticks. You have to be very careful. Uh, you best to just leave it alone and just go after it. I tell you, one of the tough things about playing off pine straw, if you're not used to it, is footing. If you have an active lower half, then you're gonna slip. It's almost better to play out of pine straw like you do out of a fairway bunker. Just play very quiet uh, from the waist down. You can't beat an opponent when you can't, when you're not driving the ball in the fairway. I mean, you're, you can't put any pressure on anybody that way. 
That's Tommy Dudley with the next to uh, Keeney there. There, uh, Keeney's ball inside the bunker. Right in the middle. Tiger looks to have a four iron here. As you can see by the camera behind him, he has a lot of room. Uh, absolutely no problem with the trees at all. Hey, he shot it right at the middle of the green. Great golf shot. Got a good break to be able to play it. He performed when he got that break. Keeney now. He's played some wonderful fairway bunker shots in the last two days. Seems to be able to hit the ball very squarely out of the bunkers. Didn't like it. Fat. Fat to the right. Came down between the bunkers, I believe. Yes, it did, Rossi. Right in behind a rake there. When you reach that point, you'll see it. Well, we talked about Tiger Woods footing in pine straw. Well, the problem for Trip Keeney here was footing as well. When he went to push off on his right side, let's watch him swing it back to the top. He looks pretty good here as he goes to transition to his left. He kind of pushes off with his right, and his right foot kind of gives away a little bit. See it slide there? The right foot slides, caught the ball heavy, went to the right. Well, it's an interesting and funny old game, isn't it? Never know. Trip is sailing along. One point up by six. Woods didn't go away. Now it's down to three, and who knows what can happen here. Interesting cap that Trip Keeney is wearing today with the logo No Fear on it. I guess that's what you would need when you take on a favorite like Tiger Woods. Certainly there was no fear in the way he played the morning 18 here, but uh, suddenly circumstances are changing. This being match play and it can turn around quickly. Steve, this shot, uh, he's going to have to play about the same way as he played that shot back at five, although he has a better lie. There's always a controversy about square grooves. You think square grooves helps with a shot this short? No, I really don't because you, you're not putting enough spin on the ball to matter. I think it's a moot point, Rossi. I do too. There are players on tour that will tell you that it makes a big difference. I beg to differ with them. It's amazing, though, that these young collegians have adopted this, what I call full motion, half speed shot around the green. So swing the club back a long way, almost at half speed and attempt to slide the club under the ball and make it come out softly. Boy, he does have that down. That takes some touch and some practice. It's pretty good from there. Tiger Woods will be putting for the win on this hole. Tiger from about 25 feet, and again, Brent, I think in the back of his mind, he says, you know, if I make it, fine, but uh, I might be a two-to-one favorite to win this hole if I can get it down in two. final match went off at 815 this morning they played in a little over three hours and it's interesting that Tiger Woods showered changed clothes between morning 18 and afternoon 18 and Keeney 
kept on the same clothes. make this to have the hole. This is the same kind of putt uh, he had back there at nine, Steve, and the green is coming out of the uh, out of the right. This putt looks like it wants to go to the right, but how much it will, I don't know. But it's pretty easy putt, is it not, Rossi, going down the hill a little bit? Well, if you get the right line, I guess it is, but uh, the thing's getting a little tighter. Uh, probably looks a little tougher than it would have at the second hole this morning. Is down to two. Hole number ten. Mr. Wood four. Mr. Keeney five. Mr. Keeney is two up. Now let's move on over to another par five here, the eleventh. Many of the players think this is the best design hole here at the stadium course. If you hit a long tee shot, you can go with this green in two. If not, you have a number of options. One, to lay up short just past the large oak on the right. Two, you can go to the smaller left-hand fairway to the left of the bunkers where it's very shallow. If you go with the green, you've got to play a well-played high shot to hold this green. Tiger Woods knocked it on this green in two yesterday with a long iron. Flag stick today, really the toughest spot right in the front of the green here. There's virtually no margin of error there. If you lay up short, it's very difficult to get it close in three. This is a hole that Tiger Woods has played very handily in his match with Buddy Alexander. Out drove Buddy about 30 yards, put an iron around the green, put an iron on yesterday. Sets up for a ball that wants to move from left to right. You aim at that waste area there and try to fit it in the right hand portion of the fairway. Look at the morning round of Trip Keeney. If it was a metal play score it would have been 66 that included a bogey at 14 it was simply wonderful golf and young man deserved the margin that he enjoyed being four up after the morning round but that's all history now and trip keeney's lead once at six holes now stands at two up tiger woods on the tee hole very reachable downwind tiger can put it on with a drive and an iron if he can drive it down the fairway Isn't it funny, Rossi, how some holes just fit your eye? That's right, and uh, I think the fact that he's, he's won two holes with pars uh, makes it a little easier to drive, Steve. It, uh, you know, it, uh, it puts him in a position where I think he said, if I can hit one good drive here, you know, I could get back to one down, and he is on the move. You mentioned earlier that it was sort of up to Keeney that he had it and all he had to do is keep playing, but he hasn't the last couple of holes. Like Buddy Alexander, he made a rash of bogeys and let Tiger Woods back in the match and subsequently won the match. Reachable from there too, although he'll have a slightly downhill lie. Tiger Woods and Trip Keeney, the eleventh hole, and Trip leads by two. The 
TPC course at Sawgrass, site of the 94th U.S. Amateur Championship, where Tiger Woods is bidding to become the youngest amateur champion in history. There have been five 19-year-old champions in the past, but never one 18 years old. And that's what Tiger Woods is swimming upstream and trying to accomplish here this afternoon. He trailed Trip Keeney, who plays collegiately at Oklahoma State in Stillwater, Oklahoma, by six holes as Keeney was magnificent on the front side. But Steve, suddenly Trip encountering some difficulty. Well, he is only, by Rossi's account, hit one of the last four greens in regulation and bogeyed holes nine and ten to lose the holes. And he's not doing what he needs to make. And that is play steady guy, force Woods to make birdies. Woods has won the last two holes of pars. Keeney has 218 yards to the front edge. Uh, the wind is coming out of the left and slightly behind the players. Uh, Tripp does not have the high shot that Woods has, and, and that puts him at a little disadvantage here. He hits his irons a lot lower, and he also has that slight downhill lie that I mentioned before. It's going to be hard to get this ball up in the air and catch it solidly. If he were to miss this a little short and left, it wouldn't be all bad. Well, in the bunker wouldn't be too bad either, uh, right, Steve. Right underneath the hole. Yeah, right underneath mm -hmm. the hole. That, that's pretty good today. Balls in the bunker to the right, and that that shot's going to be not as easy in the, as just in front, but uh, he will be uh, blasting back into the wind. Tiger Woods has 208 yards to the front edge. He has an uphill lie. Should be a fairly easy shot to play. Tiger can hit a high cut here, probably with a four iron. Very solid, beautiful looking shot. Tiger Woods has reached the par five and two, a long way from the flag stick, however. And Steve Melnick had an opportunity to speak with young Tiger Woods. Let's talk for a moment, if we can, about your career. Obviously, the junior titles have been very special, having won three of those. Now you entered uh, the finals of this U.S. Amateur with a chance to be the youngest winner of this championship. If you win tomorrow, does this do anything to change your long-range plans as an amateur, and does it accelerate perhaps what we all anticipate is a visit to the PGA Tour? Um, I don't think so. Um, even if I did win, <clears throat> or say if I won three U.S. Amateurs, I don't think I would turn pro. Because in our family, my education's... Uh, been our number one priority in our family. When I was growing up, my mom wouldn't let me go practice until I had my homework done. And so that's been like our little rule in our house. And uh, I've kept up my grades because of that. I've been a very good student. And I'm very thankful that I was raised like that. And that's one of the reasons why I chose Stanford over the other schools that uh, were recruiting me. So here is the young man who will become a freshman at Stanford this year make a road trip with the golf team over to Japan prior to the start of the academic year. Did you get a sense that this young man knows where he's been, where he is, and where he's going? Uh, you see the both kids, uh, great students, uh, Keeney a 385, Tiger Woods obviously not yet in college. In fact, he doesn't begin until late September at Stanford. Things have changed a little at Stanford, Steve. When I went there, a big road trip was San Francisco. <laughs> you know, and, and actually, the, sending the kids to Japan, I think it's great for them. Uh, just a little thing to say, though, and uh, I've always held it against Stanford, but when we won in 1946, we won the Pacific Coast Intercollegiates, and we're promised that if we won the Intercollegiates, we would go to the Nationals. And they reneged on us. We ended up paying our own way, won the championship. 
and we put the trophy in a downtown clothing store. That's the honest to God truth. Is it still there? No, I think they got it back, but it stayed there for the whole year. Just as long as you guys didn't get any free sweaters in return for the trophy, it's okay by me. Uh, that's a great story. I think Tiger Woods is away here. The shot of uh, Keeney is a little difficult. Uh, it's a pretty steep bunker, and it goes down away from him uh, right off the edge of the green, but it comes back up. I, I think he will be able to stop the ball. Has a nice lie. Well, he is good continue to master this hole. I think this is the, either the third or fourth time he's knocked it on here in two this week. His dad Earl is in attendance, has walked with him every step of the way this week. His dad, I believe, works with uh, IMG in Cleveland. Is, uh, guessing head of junior golf uh, development or a consultant uh, there to their golf development. Uh, read into that what you will. You know, Phil Mickelson was one of the few uh, who really had a sense of presence in front of the television camera. Brennan talking to this young man yesterday I said he's very composed, very alert, shows his words carefully, and it's, I guess it bespeaks the experience he's had in talking to the media. He's already picked up one habit of a lot of pros. He's pretty deliberate on the greens. Hmm, bring your putter. That's right, about three and a half feet by. The grain just would not let that one go to the right. Trips had a lot of time to think about this one. He has, but uh, I tell you, these fellas play so well out of the bunkers that uh, these shots just aren't hard anymore. I think the clubs are better, their technique is better. When you have young nerves, I, I don't think this shot's very hard. That is unlucky. Six more inches and that ball is really close. Well, on the par five second, Woods pitched in from a similar situation for par. He is there in three, but this will be his fourth. If he carries just in that first cut, which is the fringe, ball would have pitched forward and very close. Like Woods on two has the flag stick removed. Ooh, almost right over the top edge. going to lose at least one here, isn't he? With the birdie at the par five second in the afternoon 18, Keeney went to five up. Now Woods can make this putt and pull within one hole. It's a little match that, quite frankly, less than an hour ago looked like it may end early, and we may have to worry about what to do with the rest of the programming today. <laughs> now they're going to have to worry about what to do with the start time of the Arlington Million. <laughs> We may be here a while.
That is three straight holes. One by Woods. And Keeney's lead is down to one. And at one point, Keeney was six up in this match. And the players make their way to the very short par four 12th where this morning Keeney almost drove it into that bunker in front of the green. The situation a little different. He had uh, a number of holes in hand this morning, allowed him the freedom to hit a big tee shot here. When the round began this morning, it was Tiger Woods, a prohibitive favorite, yet it was Keeney who played the excellent golf Looked like he had this thing comfortably in hand, but he's dropped three consecutive holes, and now he simply leads by one. Last two times Tiger's played this hole, he's put it in those right-hand trees. Did it yesterday and again this morning. hills can't tell if it's in the bunker or not looks like it's just grass down there Keeney's caddy this week is dad Ernie and he is going 36 holes today hopefully he won't have to go 36 but he's looping the bag today too far left same place Tripp attempted to get uh, Chris Cox to stay, his teammate who we beat yesterday in caddy for him. But he had to get back to finish up a paper. His school starts tomorrow uh, in Stillwater. So Pops had to go to 36 today. And we'll be right back as Tiger Woods is closing in. Welcome back to the 94th United States Amateur Championship. Tiger Woods bidding to become the youngest amateur champion ever. At the age of 18, Tripkini, four years older. Tiger a little taller. Handicap, I don't think I'd want to be <laughs> given either of these guys shots. Steve, you'd have to, you're, you're still scratch. Oh, in my dreams, Brent, with every passing. So they've got to give you so if you played scratch, you'd get three from Tiger. I'd get three from Tiger Woods. Right. I can't believe that. I think he said he was a three handicap. Isn't that right, Frank? What's the deal? Well, <clears throat> you saw that little plus sign in front of those handicaps. That means that's the equivalent, really means minus. That means three shots better than par. So if Mr. Melnick was trying to fake himself as a scratch golfer, he would be getting, he would right. be getting three shots from Tiger Woods. That's not what I giving. said. That's what I said. He, you get three from I, him. I get three from oh, Woods. Oh, yeah. Well, he needs them. <laughs> the unkindest cut of all. <laughs> yeah. How many do you think you need to handle the Tiger, Steve? Let's just say in watching these players play that uh, I'm glad I'm not competing today. How's that? Okay, Rossi, what's the situation out there? Both balls are sitting pretty well. Neither one is going to be able to see the flag. They're not going to see anything. The tower behind the green, they can see nothing. They're just going to have to get a general idea of where they're going to pitch this ball, uh, line up with something on top of the hill. Both balls are going to come up very high, especially trips. He's got a severe uphill lie. Tiger sorted down in the bottom, but he'll still have to get it up pretty quickly. Shot of about 80 yards. Here's where yardage is very important. As Rossi said, when you can't see, you have to rely on distance and match a swing with the distance. Rossi, when you played initially as a professional, did you play with any yardage? No, none. Absolutely none. Played by feel? That's right. 
fellow named Gene Andrews, I think, was the first one to come up with that yardage book. He was from California, and uh, he had the idea to do that. Boy, he sure slowed the game down, didn't he? Oh, <laughs> he man, did. did he? And I believe it was Beeman who was credited with Nicholas becoming so reliant on yardage uh, when they played uh, amateur golf together. left. Got on the green, I think, but uh, not bad. Not bad, not good. This is a shot that's going to be very difficult to play with a wedge because it's going to come up so high. I think you might uh, choke down on maybe a pitching wedge instead of a sand wedge or take a nine iron choke way down on it because the ball's going to shoot up in the air anyway. lucky with that bounce either. We'll continue. Well, we'll come back on videotape now and we're going to show you that shot by Trip Keeney. That was the end result. And here is how it got there. He needed a good shot. Let he pull it off. Well, Tiger can go all square. Tiger got to watch that ball roll all the way across the green, so he sure knows what it's going to do. Right in the throat. He knows it. We could pick up the pace if we'd start having good and good go on out there on those greens here. This is getting a little agonizing, isn't it, Mr. Melnick? They're a little too careful here. Rossi, I think that Keeney will probably concede after he makes his putt. Sometimes you get out of your regular routine and try to be too careful. I think, Rossi, that's probably what Keeney has done. I think so. I think he changed his game plan uh, after about 15 holes this morning. That's conceded. All right. Let's roll, lads. Hole number 12 is half and four. Bump. Your Gator's going to hold up. If they beat Tennessee on the road at Knoxville, their third game of the year, they should be undefeated until they meet Florida State in Tallahassee on Thanksgiving weekend. Fifth and butts that? for candy and nuts every day would be Christmas. He's loaded. Two and a half deep on offense, three deep on defense. How are we doing, Brent? <laughs> <laughs> With a lot of speed that he's never had. You should be loaded now. Yeah, yeah there are a lot of great athletes in the state of Florida. Let one get away to Tennessee, though, partner. That quarterback, Archie Manning's son, is not a bad player. He wanted Peyton Manning. I think he liked him as an individual. He's known uh, Archie and uh, Archie's wife, Olivia, for a long time. And I think more than his athletic skills, Steve liked Peyton Manning as a young man. When you played in the amateur final, though, you didn't play match play, did you? How long did it take you to play up at Oakmont when you won it that day? Uh, well, because of guys like Hannigan, who set the course up so hard, it was a long uh, was it a, play. Yeah, if they'd set course? it up a little easier, it would have been different. Uh, How long should you think the average golfer should take to play 18 holes? 
Well, we're in that business. Uh, we like to see that our players on our courses go out in the morning and play in about 340, 345, and the last group played in 415. What do you think, Frank Hannigan? That's four what players. Be? Well, it's gonna, my answer is going to depend somewhat on the golf course, but I think in general four players unimpeded uh, shouldn't be allowed to play golf if they, if they take as long as four hours on the average American golf course. Should they start timing them at the turn and pick them up? Well, and, uh, some places where they, uh, where they rely on revenue for a living, they, they do that, don't they, Steve? You're in the business. We encourage uh, consistently fast play. Yes, we do. And the old course in St. Andrews, as you know, you and I played there a couple of years ago. There's a ranger on the course. Absolutely. They'll throw you off if you're not keeping up with a uh, We made it in 340 that day, Frank. Uh, and we can't play at all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a misnomer. You can play badly quickly. <laughs> I know, it's true. You certainly can. How about continuous putting? Does that help? Uh, I think for the most part that uh, when it's, we, we play most of the time uh, among friends, when, it, when you're ready to play, you play. We kind of abandoned the who's away. Now, I know the purists don't like that, but in the essence of uh, pace of play, if you're to your ball ready to play, go hit it. Well, now finally, we're ready for some golf. Here's Tiger Woods. 179 yards today. Flagstick cut in a supposedly hard spot, but anything to the middle of the green will go right down to the hole. Uh, I don't think it's as hard a spot as that plateau on the right. It does bring the water into play, though. A little like 16 at Augusta, Steve. Well, and if you play a right to left shot like Keeney, it's a little more accessible for Woods. Uh, if he's going to play that cut, you've got to be very careful where you start it. Boy, hits that ball high. Oh, that carried to... one foot too far. Or that might have gone down in the hole. Keeney needs to make a good swing. He's been waiting so long he probably forgets how to swing. Interesting sidebar to that career holes in one. Three of them have been on Friday the 13th. How about that? be a little too far right to go down that hill. It's going to go down, but it's going to be a little short. Not bad, though. Very makeable from there. Not bad. Tiger has a putt that is impossible to leave short. All he's got to do is touch it, and it's going to go to the hole. Steve, I know you had a chance uh, earlier to take a look at uh, Tiger Woods' swing. Tiger looks terrific at setup. Everything is in alignment. Terrific posture over the ball. But watch his top of the swing position. Swings back the top. He looks terrific. As we freeze up here, look, there's a slight bow in his left wrist, and the club face is slightly shut at the top. Let's watch him as he swings through to the target. Terrific extension through the ball. O to be 18 again. The reason he shut at the top, let's take a look at his address position. Look at this very strong left hand grip. A little bit like Paul Azinger and a swing a little bit like Paul Azinger. Let's watch. Takes it away. Very quiet hands. Great rotation of the upper body. And now he clears his lo lower side so well gets to his left side, and it's really a quiet release with his hands. If he were to turn his hands over from that position, the ball would go dead left. And 
for Tiger. He first played at the age of six months, didn't he? Let's take a look at trip swing now with Steve. Trip has an excellent golf swing. Evenly balanced over the ball. Looks terrific set up to it, even better finish. The reason, great extension. Let's take a look. Watch as he takes the club away. Look how far away from his body and what great extension at the top of the swing he has. And then on the forward swing, watch him swing through to his left side. Transitions nicely to his left, gets his weight out over his left leg. Watch his right shoulder pull his weight through. And the finish is absolutely picture perfect. You know, if you put Keeney on this tee, forget what has happened and said, you're playing in the finals, you have a one hole lead with six to play, you're pretty happy. If he can forget what's happened, forget it one time he had a six hole lead and just to enjoy the fact that he has a one hole margin, he's not in bad shape. The longest time Woods was just known as a very good junior player. He's won the USGA Junior three times, but this summer is when he came of age. He destroyed the field at the Pacific Northwest uh, Amateur Championship and most importantly won the Western Amateur, which is a combination of 72 hole stroke play and four matches uh, to of uh, match play rather. And that's considered the second most important amateur championship. By the time he finishes today, he may no longer be the youngest amateur champion ever. Are you implying this is a funereal pace? Maybe gamesmanship. Think so? Maybe. I hope not. It sets a bad example. Grain got him again, Steve. Boy, you really have to realize that everything that grain goes to the west. It's unlikely, too, that Tiger has played on many Bermuda grass greens growing up in California. I think Tiger's probably played in more places than any other 18 year old, though. He has been around. solid hole he's played in the last five. Solidly in. Tripkini. One up through 13. The par for 14th will be coming up. This golf course has appeared lovely this week, hasn't it, Steve? And uh, we're going to take a look now at the par for 14th, which is where they're headed. Throughout the history of the Players' Championship, this has been the most difficult par four. Usually the wind blows at you from left to right, which is the bane of all right-handed golfers. The tough play, it's the long second, as you must fit a long iron into the screen that sits at you from left to right. It is a very, very difficult hole to make par on. That one, cart path. The, that one caught the cart path, rolling down. It all depends on the trees. He's got a nice lie, 
might get a drop because you'd be standing on the cart path. But I think you'd be able to play that shot. Play a duck slice, maybe? <laughs> well, all depends what, what trees are. I'm not all the way down there, but uh, there haven't been many balls down in that area, I don't think. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's a beautiful drive here. Hit a little soft, but still down here plenty far. Well, perhaps Trip Keeney steadied himself with those two pars. He had lost three consecutive holes before the 12th. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is our ESPN coverage of the 94th United States Amateur Championship coming up a little bit later at five. We'll take you to Arlington Park for the running of the Arlington Million, which figures to be one of the finest thoroughbred horse races of the year. Paradise Creek, which will break from the outside the 12 post position, figures to be the odds on favorite. Bob Rosberg earlier today said folks watch Fanmore. Robert Frankel, outstanding trainer. DeSormo will be in the irons, and the Ross man has touted you on a good horse breaking from the second position. And I want to pass along the information that my man Ross is as good a handicapper as I know. All right, Rossi, here's Keeney. <laughs> a lot of people are going to laugh at that statement. <laughs> I've busted a lot of people. <laughs> but uh, Trip Keeney has 160 yards to the hole. He kind of got unlucky in that the ball just hit soft and trickled down a slope. Uh, it's kind of a mounded fairway. You're going to be able to see a drain right in front of him uh, down at the bottom of this slope. And it really has kind of a severe downhill lie. Uh, you don't see a whole lot of these in Florida, but uh, you do see a few around uh, around the TPC course here. Wind behind the players, slightly out of the left. Probably just a good eight iron off a downhill slope. There's Tiger Woods ball again. Is that back on some of those pine needles back in there, Steve? Uh -huh. back, uh, yeah, it's right on the pine needles again. It's... He's got an interesting shot. We'll talk about it in just a minute. Has okay. some options to play. Pivotal point in this match here on the 14th. Oh, it's a beautiful looking shot here, right at the middle of the green. Very solid. Pin high, maybe 30 feet to the left. Tiger Woods has about 125 yards. That, that is of no consequence. He has a tree about uh, 40 yards in front of him. He has two choices. He can go to the right of it, which is a little narrower, but he won't have to do anything but hit it straight or he could cut it. Now he has the kind of a lie that you can play a cut. It's a bare lie on the pine needles. I think he'll go to the left of that tree and try and play a little slice and run it in the, uh, the opening. Probably take a seven iron, has to keep it down a little. Woods. Woods has now missed four of the last five fairways from the tee. Between trees with wonderful shots. Let's go back to that uh, interview Steve Melnick had earlier with uh, Tiger Woods. If you had to pick a player in the game of golf today whose personality and career you would most like to emulate, who might that be? None. What I like to do is take I probably have about 50 guys or so that I'll take different parts of their personality, game, or whatever they do, and I like to fit that into mine. So I have one super being. I don't limit myself to just one person because one person has a lot of faults. And uh, as we all know, humans make mistakes. But this super being is pretty much almost perfect, so that's the way I like to do it. You got that, Brent? Yes, indeed. Yeah, 
now they're up on the green, and again, uh, Trekini probably uh, starting to talk to himself. He walks off the tee, and he thinks he's in pretty good shape on a hole, and uh, gets up there on the green, and uh, the tiger has reappeared from out of the woods. And Keeney is away. He has about 35 feet up the hill, putting right into the green. Actually, the green is across. Let me correct that. It's a tough putt to get the right distance. Frank Canning, an interesting situation here about a perhaps a ball out taken out of play. Somebody wants to take a ball out of play on the basis that it's been uh, damaged and unfit for play. And the uh, rules uh, say that in this case, the opponent has to agree. I don't know what happened out there. Whose ball was involved? Hit the cart path. Remember yeah, Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods' ball hit the cart path. Uh, he asked the referee. I don't think that uh, Tripp had a look at it, though. He should have. The referee is not supposed to get involved in that unless the players disagree. Shall I tell him that, Frank? <laughs> short. I think both players here are just being too careful. I think they've got out of their, got out of their own sort of routine. Now they're playing more one another than they are just going out and playing golf. Yeah, we've seen no putts hold of any consequence. We've seen no terrific shots, if you will, other than perhaps the two shots that Tiger played uh, to the par 5 11th. Whereas this morning we witnessed great shot making by Keeney. Now fatigue is obviously a problem. Uh, they played 36 holes of stroke play. Now they're in their eighth match. They're too young to be fatigued. <laughs> That's for old guys like you and me. That's why we play cards, Brad. This for the win. He needs to make this to stay one up. As we move over to the 15th, you know, Steve, the one thought that comes to mind is that Tiger Woods is going to have to steady himself off the tee because sooner or later he's not going to get out from amongst all those trees we see. Well, he's missed four of the last five holes, and this is a very wide fairway, though, and he really sets up well for his left to right tee shot. If you drive it in play, it's a mid iron second to this green, which is built kind of flat on the ground. We've seen a surprisingly large number of birdies at this longish par four, but the flag stick today really tough back left particularly if you fade the ball although the wind is helping the ball toward the flag stick anything left of that flag drops into two big grass depressions a little bit of a breeze up there huh? Rossi at the flag stick we see fluttering now 
Yeah, the, uh, the wind is just blowing, you know, maybe two or three miles an hour. Uh, it's not affecting the ball at all, though. Weather's been wonderful, hasn't it, Bob? Perfect. I've never seen it like this in Florida. Well, Rossi, there's a great deal of speculation that if the Players' Championship were moved out of March into perhaps May, that not only would the golf course be better, the weather would be better, you'd have complete foliage on the trees, the fairways themselves would be more full, you'd have rough, which you don't have in March to speak of. So there's a great argument for moving the Tournament Players' Championship back a couple of months. Gee, I think that would be wonderful for the uh, for the sport. They'd start off with the Masters, and then they'd have that to build on to come down here in May. And there's not a real big golf tournament in the month of May. Oh, yes, watching lurking there in the shadows, the gator here. Don't let your puppies wander around this golf course late at night. No sorry. Keep those cocker spaniels and poodles at home. Here we go. Into the trees again. Way left. And this one's not too good. Sooner or later. I'm standing right by it, and this one is not too good. He is going to have a couple of ways to play it, but uh, neither one is very good. I recognize those feet. He wasn't kidding, folks. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot. <laughs> well. That looked better. Right. That's right, though, I believe, is it not? Or is it going to catch a fairway? Yes. Barely got by those trees just off the tee. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, you can imagine the nerves right now. Both these young fellows. An awful lot at stake. An exemption into the U.S. and the British Open if you win this amateur championship. Welcome back to the U.S. Amateur Championship with Bob Rosberg and Steve Melnick and Frank Hannigan. I'm Brent Musburger. We have reached the 15th hole, the par four. Again, Tiger Woods was one down in trouble off the tee as we go out to Rossi. He had a big hook uh, and caught the rough behind the trees to the left. Now it is very, very close as to whether he's going to be standing on the cart path or not. Uh, it's just a matter of, of, of one or two inches. Now, I, I don't know how far Tiger stands from the ball. He does not have a very good lie. It would be a pretty good break if he got to drop it because not only might he catch a better lie, but he wouldn't have to hook the ball near as much around these trees. 155 yards to the hole. Well, let's ask Frank Hannigan uh, what the relief rule would be here in the situation. What will David Eager look at here, Frank? Well, first of all, he's got to look at to make sure that it is a kind of a reasonable stance. He can't just invent an exaggerated stance in order to take advantage of the situation. If there's any kind of doubt, however, you are going to tilt in the direction of the player. If he gets a drop, he gets a uh, he gets to establish the nearest point of relief and then drop within one club length of that. So it's quite. quite it a looks like uh, there's uh, no even question about it right here. He's just getting ready to play the ball right here. Good. Which is as it should be. Very difficult to hook a ball this much out of Bermuda rough. win the great escape if he prevails here. What a shame Rossi can no longer use. He's got no shot. Tiger Woods. <laughs> Kenny has 141 yards to the hole. <laughs> Bobby has got to be talking to himself every time he looks over in the woods. There's his opponent and then he gets ready to play and he looks up on the green. Oh, Tigers on the green It is amazing. Kenny 
in good shape. He's one up, but remember, the first 18 played earlier today, he was six up at one point. We'll be right back. A minor footnote to our bumper, Bryony Bayer did play his collegiate golf at Georgia Tech, but he transferred to Valdosta State, where he completed his college elig eligibility. And one thing about Valdosta down in that area, man, do they play some high school football in that town? They have Whoa. won the mythical high school championship, I think, three times, Brent, and they've turned out a lot of great athletes. Great golfer came out of there, too, a guy named Dynamite Goodlow. You remember him? Dynamite. Yeah, and Bunky Henry uh, from Valdosta as well. been one of the best long putters we've seen in a long time. But the players have not hold a putt of any consequence since the seventh hole when Woods hold a long putt for birdie there. We haven't had a change since through the 11th and remember at that point Trip Keeney had dropped three consecutive holes. He was four up going to the ninth tee and then uh, trouble set in but he steadied himself with three pars matching Tiger Woods right here and now an opportunity to go two up. It appeared that Keeney got a great read on the butt. This is very makeable. Oh, it's the last thing you want to do. Trepkini remains one up. Remains one up. Now still ahead, a par five, the 16th, then the par three 17th, and finally the par four 18th. Steve, let's start with the 16th. 16, a great gambling hole. It can be reached in two by these two players. A big advantage, I think, off the tee for Keeney, who plays right to left. Woods will have a much tougher shot fitting his tee shot in the fairway. Second shot with a good drive will be with a long iron. The water obviously comes into play for anything missed to the right. But I think if both players play a good tee shot here, they can knock it on in two. And the flag stick today, where else? But front right certainly brings that water into play. You almost block out the right side of that green with your second shot and aim left. They leave the flag sticks where they were this morning. This is a 36 hole match, so nothing has changed with the flag sticks in this competition. What a joy it is to play on greens that virtually have no spike marks on them other than your own from the morning round. And what a beautiful view of the Atlantic here. Ponte Vedra, Florida, southeast of Jacksonville. Wonderful beaches down in this area and some sensational golf courses all the way down along the coast of South Georgia and northern Florida. A terrific place for vacationers to come down here, even extending all the way up to Hilton Head, Steve. They do love their golf down here in the southeast. Well, we have a wealth of great golf courses here in the First Coast area. It's really made up of five counties. We're actually playing in St. John's County, which contains St. Augustine. And Duval County, that's Jacksonville, and Nassau County is where Fernandina Beach is. Where you have a residence. Amelia Island. That's where you used to live, partner. I did they told me you were a better fisherman than you were a golfer. You must have been some fisherman. I could wet a line every now and then. <laughs> Steve Melnick, one of the bass masters. I expect to tune you on about 3 a.m. in the morning. Do you know, you take these road trips, you know that? You turn on your TV set in a the hotel. These guys are fishing for $50,000 every. I don't understand it. For insomniacs, it's great. All right, tee shot for Woods here at 16. Wind slightly in the player's face. They're going to have to hit pretty good drive here to get home, Steve. People liked it. Right. So, ooh. ooh, that sunk at the last minute. Not a very good angle either.
time for Tripp to play that hot hook. It's a shot you practice all the time on the practice tee with your friend. You say, all right, I got to turn it around that corner. I got to pick up about 10 or 15 yards. Let me hit a swinging hook out there. Same thing, but that ball may have stayed up a little bit better over there in the grass. Well, we'll find out when, uh, when our man Bob gets over there. Good crowd here this year. Welcome back to the TPC course. It is the top of the hour, and the issue here is still very much in doubt. Trip Keeney out of Oklahoma State, one up on Tiger Woods, who will be a freshman this year at Stanford. They have reached the par 5 16th off the tee now, getting ready for their second shots. And we go out to our man, Bob Rossberg. Rossi? Neither player has a very good lie. Trip Keeney has a 205 yards to the front edge. Now, I believe that the strategy here, if I were Trip, I would lay the ball up and put it all over to Tiger. Tiger has a terrible lie. He only has 190 yards to the front edge. He could possibly, if he catches the ball well, get it to the front edge. I don't think he can carry it anywhere to the right uh, to do anything, but he could run it on. There's a, there's a marshal uh, standing down there that is quite large. He's almost blocking the whole view of the green. You're gonna have to get him out of there. A total eclipse of the 16th. He may, have, he may have been one of your pulling guards over there in Gainesville. He's pulled too many. <laughs> well, I think, is this what he did, Rossi? Did he hit it yes. too far? Yeah, no, no. I think this is perfect. He, yeah. just, he only hit it about 100 yards. He, he's leaving himself a full shot. He's going to have a shot of about 110 yards. But he perfect. did not find a fool with that tree over there. Now it's kind of up the tiger. The tiger's going to say, what am I going to do? Pretty gassy. Right, right here, six times heavy. Got the kind of a club out. Looks like he's going to try and shoot it down a lot farther. Pulled a six iron. I think he could get it there if he really nailed it, but I don't think he's got that kind of a lie. Unless he plays it back in his stance, Rossi tries to trap it, hopes it kind of squirts a little right. Great shot. Well done. Hit kind of soft, Steve, didn't it? I think it hit that tree, or Did Rossi. it catch the top of the tree? Yeah, I think it caught a branch, and that's why it came down so softly. And a program reminder uh, from ESPN right now, we're at the top of the hour. This was uh, due to be the start of the show, The America's Horse, and that would lead into the Arlington Million. And just as soon as we wrap up the United States Amateur Championship, which is on live right now, we will join that show. And, of course, then there will be plenty of time for the, uh, the feature on the day, the million-dollar race at uh, Arlington Park, uh, just outside of Chicago. Right now, you're watching uh, the amateur championship. Tiger Woods is the favorite, bidding to become, among other things, the youngest amateur champion ever. There have been five who are 19 who have captured this great championship, including Jack Nicklaus. And he is matched against Trip Keeney, a young man who now plays collegiately out of Oklahoma State and whose sister, Kelly Keeney, who is in the gallery right now, won the Junior Girls Championship up in Great Falls, Montana, about five weeks ago. Here is Tripp. Tripp has 115 yards to the hole. Just a wisp of a breeze blowing in his face. Makes the shot a little easier, actually. Stop it over that bunker. This will be the third shot on the par 5 16th. The famous par 3 island green 17th is ahead, and then the par 4 finishing hole here at the TPC. Ooh, flirted with it. Came up and out of that shot a little quickly. It's like uh, one of those shots that you hit with both hands on the wheel, you never really released it. Tiger Woods ball is in the short rough has a nice dry lie which uh, which helps slightly downhill lie but uh, not bad. It's got a lot of green on which to pitch the ball. I look for Tiger to get this ball close. 
He's in an area of brown grass that golf course superintendents call hot spots. They're typically up on the top of little ridges. They drain quickly. That's why you don't see a lot of green grass on the tops of these little knolls. Looking at this grass past the tree, Steve, I think maybe he got a break and they hit that tree. It's pretty deep up here. And although he would have had a lot better angle uh, if his ball had gone farther, if the lie would not have been as good. only defense, and there are few, in defending this slow play is what is at stake as the amateur champion. Brent, as you said, the entries into the Masters, the British Open, the U.S. Open. The both are already into the Masters now. This is the U.S. Open and the British Open exemption uh, if you're the champion. But both of the two finalists are invited to Augusta. And that's, uh, that's quite an honor for these uh, two fellows. They certainly will enjoy that. Tiger can pitch this ball up to the middle of the green and it'll spin right uh, down to the hole off that slope. Everything funnels down to that hole. Beautifully done. Very impressive. He plays that very nice, like a little dead-handed shot. That man has a lot of game. And then, Rossi, it appears as though Keeney's got a tough lie up against the, uh, the cut of rough there. He sure does. He's going to have to break the club up very abruptly. Coming up the hill, though, Steve, that, that's the only thing that makes it a little easier. But uh, it is a difficult shot. You can play any number of clubs. He's gone with a very lofty club here. Watch out. What a great shot. What a touch. It was on this hole this morning that Woods made birdie. And he is looking to do so again and attempt to square this match. He made a great birdie here this morning, Steve. Had to hit a three iron for his third shot. In fact, he was farther from the hole in, in two than uh, Trip was in one and ended up winning the hole. Well, I see, if I'm not mistaken, this is a putt that is dead down grain. You want it to break to the right, but it, I don't believe this putt does break right, does it? Well, it's sort of down. If anything, the, the grain might take it a little right, Steve. I don't think it's going to do much. I think you're right. I think inside the hole. You definitely don't want to get it outside the hole. If he puts it outside the hole, he'll miss this putt. What next? The par 317th. Steve Malik and Bob Rosberg. I'm Brad Musburger. We are watching the 94th U.S. Amateur Championship. Tiger Woods and Trip Keeney now are all square. Keeney last won a hole back on the front side, the sixth. He was four up when they teed off for the second 18 today. He has captured only two holes here, the second and the sixth. He lost nine, 10, and 11, and now 16, 
as Tiger Woods has rallied to draw all square with the par 3 17th and the par 4 18th up ahead. If they are still all square through 18, they will go to the 10th and they will start play again on the back side. And that, of course, would be sudden death. They wouldn't play nine more holes, but it would be sudden death. And Rasa, you saw Woods tee shot this morning on 17, did you not? He played a sensational shot just right over the flag, about uh, oh maybe 10 feet over the flag and just slightly to the right of it. The wind is coming out of the out of the right now. Uh, you know, it's a pretty good shot for Tiger now. If he can aim it uh, just a little to the left of the hole and cut it back into that wind. Uh, any, anything hooking here, uh, it could be a tough shot. 139 yards today. And they're using that left hand tee with the flag stick on the right. You're just looking right at all the water. Uh, anything to the right is going to go in the water. Funny thing about it here in match play, Steve, if, if the first person knocks it in the water, the second guy can't go safe, though. There's nowhere to go safe. Just try to find land. What you call indecision, Steve? When I mean, you got two of them up there. of being very good and very lucky. In his match with Buddy Alexander, he pulled it, stopped from going in the water by less than a foot. Play right to left, and you put the flag stick right on 17. You can't pull the trigger. So Keeney and Woods will make their way now to the Island Green. We'll take a break and come right back. This match is all square. We're back with Tiger Woods, and he feels extremely fortunate about what just happened here on 17. But Brent, when the ball went his, in his in the air, his heart was in his throat. Now he watched where this ball landed. It actually misses a putting surface to the right and fails to go in the water. You can count on one hand over the years of many balls that have done so. Call it lucky, perhaps. But I assure you, he was not trying to go right to the flagstick. I think this 17th hole is a much better hole at match play than it is at stroke play. Because you can run yourself up a huge score at stroke play here, and you're apt to take a chance, as Woods did here, at match play. shot very very makeable I think he knows that looks to me Steve that uh, Tiger's going to put this ball uh, how about uh, uh, the way you felt about putting the ball off of a Bermuda fringe 
I never liked to, Rossi, because the fringes here are so coarse. That's oh. right. Uh, you know, as good a chipper as uh, as Tiger is, uh, he's already chipped one ball in today, and he, he chips them in all the time. And I, I'm kind of surprised that he has the putter out. Sometimes you think if you take putter, you're trying to make par. If you try to chip it, you're trying to make it. Keeney should not have any trouble getting his ball to the hole. In fact, he's got to be careful he doesn't run it well by because he's going down the slope as it approaches the hole. And the pace certainly slowed down in the uh, second 18 today. They had already completed the front side of this time, but now not through 17 yet. Here's Trip Keeney with the championship at stake. For a moment that looked like it was going to be too short, but he judged it perfectly. Well done from over there with a lag putt. One time Brent in this match he was six down and now he can go one up. Seems inconceivable. can become the youngest amateur champion in history and Trip Keeney can only wonder about what might have been at this point. And another point to make about Tiger Woods. This is a sport which dearly needs some new heroes here in the United States and Tiger Woods is putting on some performance here this afternoon in the amateur championship. I cannot think of a hole that brings together all the drama that we're facing here than the 18th at the stadium course. You simply have to drive your ball in the fairway if you hope to knock it on the green in two. You play a big sweeping hook. I think it's to a big advantage to the players. The second shot to this long, length, undulating par four green is no less easy. What a great finish to this wonderful match, these two fine competitors. And what the again? Stick, excuse me, Brent. <laughs> and the toughest spot again. Well, again, a reminder, Steve, uh, I'm sorry that we have uh, cut into the time of America's horse. And as soon as we are finished here with the amateur championship, we'll go there. And then following that is the Arlington Million, 14 horses scheduled to go to the post there, a mile and a quarter, a million dollars at stake. And right now, folks, we are watching some thoroughbred perform here on the golf course. Here is a young man who twice this week could have tossed in the towel, got help when Buddy Alexander couldn't get the job done earlier in a match. And you cannot say enough about how Tiger Woods has hung tough again today. 36 holes down six and now he is one up and one to go. Rossi what's he using. Well I, I'm down the fairway Steve. Uh, I do not know what he's using. Wind out of the right. It's a one iron. <laughs> and he has not hit a fairway since 11. Until now. Well played. Last time he came to this hole one up against Buddy Alexander, they tied it in sixes. That will not be the case today.
Tiger Woods ahead for the first time after 35 holes, one up. He is within one hole of becoming the youngest amateur champion in history. So the final examination for the finest amateur golfers in the United States and Tiger Woods. Comebacks in the history of this championship trailing by as many as six holes. Tiger Woods came back would not quit did not wilt here in the. Tough environment that he has faced. He's well aware of his position in history the young man who. Had a tiny golf club in his hands at six months. And at age three, he went to the Donahue show, was later a guest on the Bob Hope special. People have been bragging about him and raving about his performance since as long as he can remember. Here he is now closing in on the championship that he has wanted, and a lot of interested spectators here. <laughs> Well, I think we've seen an excellent match between two very, very good players. Brent, as we turn back the clock, they both shot 137 in their 36 old stroke play qualifier. Obviously, Keeney not the more accomplished of the two, even though Tiger's just 18 years old. This has been a great match. I wonder if Jerry Pate had known that that old Gator was living in that pond if he had uh, taken that swan dive after he won. <laughs> I don't think even Pate would have attempted to go in there after the Gators. Tiger Woods is 200 yards from the hole. Wind out of the right, slightly behind. 84. Straight down the wind, though. Oh, cool. That's the, that's the ground. Um, uh, OK. This is not a time to finesse a shot. Looks like he has a six iron, like you say, Steve. He wants to hit something hard. Yes. At the right side of the green, should go left when it hits. Trip has 182 yards. He's got the angle where he's got to shoot it up to the right. The ball's going to go left very hard when it gets on the green from the angle from which he's playing. on the second tier the flag stick on the back tier but he has an awkward little shot off the fringe. Now we want to go back as they uh, march up here to the 18th green. We want to show you the key the key moment in this match play championship 36 holes today and it was here very deliberate couldn't decide which club to use finally went with this team. Looked like he hit a hard nine. Ball's in the air. He's scared to death. But it stays dry. He's immensely relieved. The one point that I want to make about Tiger Woods is that every time when he appeared to be in difficulty, including right here, he made the most of every opening that was offered to him. And this gave him the lead, the first of the day. Tiger Woods. What a future this young man has ahead of him. It's interesting that the only thing that you wonder about is whether or not he'll get tired of competitive golf. He has played it so long as a youngster. 
But right now he is just walking on top of the clouds. This is a tremendous moment for him. To really put into perspective how well these two young men have played. Keeney was six under on his ball this morning. Tiger Woods two under. This afternoon, though, when he needed it most, Tiger Woods was four under. Keeney, by our calculations, is one over. Some total, Brent. Excellent golf. Tiger's going to be putting straight down green, down the hill just a little. One of the faster putts on this golf course. See, don't you think that in Tiger's mind he knows four is good enough given what Keeney faces here with his third? Oh, I guarantee you he'd take four and go quietly. I don't think the putt's going to break very much, Steve. It looks like it's fairly level to me. Well, your point is well taken. He's putting dead down grain, even though. It doesn't appear as that as though it is. Definite misread there. I think he hit it right where he wanted to. Never moved. And yeah, what about Keeney's third shot? He really has a hard shot. He's got to come across about five feet of fringe and then up a very sharp slope and then to a level spot. Uh, it's going to come, uh, I would think, left to right uh, off the hill and then sort of straighten up with the grain and the slope. Too hard, just wouldn't take the break back to the left. Still away? He is definitely away. He's got about maybe five and a half feet left.
conceded to Tiger Woods. It's over. Tiger Woods is the youngest U.S. amateur champion ever. There's his father, Earl Woods, 20 years in the Army, did two Vietnam stints as a Green Beret, retired as a lieutenant colonel, once had a Vietnamese friend and colleague who his friends called Tiger, and he named his son in his honor. He has never seen his comrade since he left Vietnam, but how proud he would be of his namesake here today. We go to Bob Rossberg. Rossi? Tiger, I've got to ask you a couple of questions. Number one, have you ever been six down before? I've never been six down and won. <laughs> I've been six down and lost. Oh, well, that was a tremendous comeback. Uh, you had a little problem the, for the first 27 holes. I think by your own admission, you'd say you didn't play real well, but boy, those last nine holes, you played some great shots. Why? Well, I, I was struggling a little bit um, early. I was sliding a little bit with my hips. And when I start doing that, my right hand kicks in, and I don't know where the ball's going. But on the backside, uh, I just hit turn. And uh, from there, I think everything worked out pretty good. You made a couple of great shots out of the trees there. Yeah. Uh, you know, it takes a little luck to have shots, yeah, but, but exactly. you, played some, you played a shot at 14 15 that were as good as I've seen in a long time. Well, um, <clears throat> put it to you this way I've grown up in those trees. I've been so <laughs> wild for so long <laughs> that uh, it's, it's pretty easy for me to hit those kind of shots because. Uh, uh, I play with them all the damn time. <laughs> well, Tiger, I'm not sure if anybody's ever come from six down in the finals of the U.S. Amateur, but it was a sensational performance. Thanks. And we at ESPN congratulate you. Thanks, Bob. Best of luck Thanks. in the future. All right, thank you. What a wonderful performance. Could Tiger Woods become golf's next superstar? They'll take him. He's a likable young man, and what a performance here today. Tiger Woods is the youngest amateur champion ever. So for Bob Rosberg, Steve Melnick, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long and a reminder the Bell Canadian Open coming your way Thursday. Coverage begins here on ESPN at 4 p.m. Eastern. So long, everybody.